and then they hit them with what Roberto Martinez was scared of for the entire second half. A perfect counter starting from the goal kick, with two players only positioned beside the back line to receive the ball. After winning the aerial duel, here comes the role of the second player who is responsible to take the advantage of that station role played by the first player. Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we'll analyze the match between Belgium and Morocco. With the ball, Belgium used the shape, where three players were forming the back line. Meanwhile, Axel Wiedzel and Onana were in the midfield, and De Bruyne and Eden Hazard were in advanced positions. On the other hand, Morocco used a 4-1-4-1 formation during the defensive phase. They used a medium defensive line, and Robert played as a single pivot. So this is how both teams looked like whenever Belgium were trying to build an attack. You can see how all the midfielders from Belgium are closely marked. That's due to the defensive shape of Morocco. Morocco used this diamond shape when pressing. With up to 5 players, they ensured all the midfield options are marked when the back line owns the possession of the ball. Whenever a pass was played inside the pressing block, the team would close down the spaces very quickly. In most cases, Morocco performed a tactical foul to get back to their positions. More minutes into the match, this pressing block was pushing forward, so Belgium had the possession of the ball, but they kept negative possession. Roberto Martinez found three solutions. The first was to play direct passes on the flanks, by using Mounier and Thorgan Hazard to avoid interacting with this pressing block. The second solution was depending on the off the ball movement of De Bruyne. So whenever he drops down, the back line would pass the ball to him as it was easier for him to find forward passing options. The third solution was to stretch this pressing block, using the off the ball movement of De Bruyne and Axel Wiedzel, and then passing the ball directly to Hazard. I wanted to remind you again that the Black Friday deals at the Econo Coaches Academy are expiring very soon, so do not miss out on the huge 50% off on the annual membership that they are providing when using the code MITSUJR at the checkout. You can find the link in the description below. On the other hand, Belgium applied really good high pressure as well. Roberto Martinez wanted to mark all the players during the build-up, to force missed passes or intercept the ball high of the pitch. Although the positioning of the players was good enough during the pressure, this pressure was not aggressive as you can see. Meaning that whenever Hakimi moved inside the pressing block of Belgium for example, he had enough time to turn around and deliver through passes behind the defensive line, which completely counters the high pressure. Whenever Morocco progressed those counter attacks, they would focus on the quick transitions and perform link up plays on the flanks, before crossing the ball inside the box. Morocco's defensive block was compact as you can see, leaving the only options for Roberto Martinez on the flanks. However, I believe Belgium's main focus in their preparations was not Meunier or Thorgan Hazard on each side. Judging on how the team looked like in this game, Roberto Martinez surely wanted to build most of his attacks from Eden Hazard and De Bruyne, but Onana and Axel Wiedzel were always out of the plays, so this connection in the midfield line was never made possible. The most realistic and the solution that was mostly used in the game was playing these side balls to Meunier on the right hand side. Mounier would then concentrate on delivering the balls inside the box. Again, Belgium was lacking players in the midfield even during the attacking phase. Belgium even countered Morocco's high pressure by performing these switches to the left and right of the pitch. Now, Morocco's first goal that was ruled offside later was something that the team was trained on. Basically, they would overload the near post. Here we have a 5 vs 5 situation at the near post which obviously pulls the attention of Courtois, and then Hakim Ziyech directly shoots the ball towards the net. The same concept was applied in Morocco's first goal, which we will discuss in a minute. This video is brought to you by Play by Metrica Sports, the fundamental tool for every coach and analyst. Create and manage all your video analysis in one platform. Use the coupon MITSUJR at the checkout for a 10% discount. Moving to the second half. Belgium's high pressure was noticeably decreasing in the second half, however the team kept the same shape. On the other hand, Walid Gragi alternated his pressing level, so we saw Morocco using a compact block for a little bit, while Roberto Martinez used the same build-up shape. The advantage that Morocco had is the alternation in the pressing tactics, 
so the team was able to perform good high pressure every couple of minutes to disturb Belgium while building up. As you can see, the team was able to push high up the pitch while marking the possible passing options, forcing Belgium to drop down into their own half. What I didn't understand is why Belgium stopped applying high pressure in the second half. It just felt like Roberto Martinez did not want to risk having to deal with any of the counter-attacks that occurred in the first half. So he avoided applying high pressure whatsoever. It was to the point that Morocco's players were able to receive the ball comfortably between the lines, which obviously allowed them to create much more attacks compared to the first half. Defensively, Morocco used the same 4-1-4-1 formation. Roberto Martinez stopped in Telemans to help counter the high pressure applied by Morocco. Being in somewhat the same position as Onana, this substitution did not make much of a difference. We even saw Belgium just playing the exact same side passes as we saw in the first half, even when Telemans was in the middle asking for the ball. Belgium's lack of high pressure caused many problems as the team was not using a low block obviously, so using a medium block without applying any pressure forced them to concede multiple attacks. The alternation between keeping this medium block, conceding the play for a little bit to give the players some minutes, and then going for the complete opposite and applying very high pressure is what made the difference for Morocco in the second half. You can see how the team is pressing in this 4 vs 4 situation while marking all the other forward passing options as well. As mentioned earlier, the first goal was scored after using the same set piece tactic. Morocco overloaded the near post again, but this time two players were at the far post. Courtois had his attention towards the other two players. You can see that in how he was trying to fix his position and go backwards. But again, one player was there to pull the attention of Courtois away from the ball, as it was shot directly towards the net. As a reaction, Belgium pushed forward with multiple players, but Morocco used the same medium block that they applied throughout the second half. And then, they hit them with what Roberto Martinez was scared of for the entire second half. A perfect counter starting from the goal kick with two players only positioned beside the back line to receive the ball. After winning the aerial duel, here comes the role of the second player who is responsible to take the advantage of that station role played by the first player, by winning the second ball. Now Morocco has the ball between the lines, then an extra player would take the advantage by performing a blindside run behind the defensive line to receive this through pass. After moving forward, now Morocco were in a 3 vs 4 situation inside the box, the ball was played horizontally, and Morocco scored the second goal. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed the analysis. Let me know what matches you would like me to cover from the final matches of the group stage in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.